the number one complaint about a backhand slice that I hear from players that I coach is that it floats. It doesn't really bite through the court, it doesn't knife through the court, it doesn't stay low, it just basically sits there on a silver platter for the opponent to attack. In this video I show you why that happens, how to fix it, and I'm also going to introduce a what I call a specialty shot. And I think it might be when we're seeing the pros hit that shot, that that causes a whole lot of misunderstanding that then in turn lead to the floaters. The reason why your slice ain't slicing. Yeah, your slice ain't slicing. Anyways, moving on. Why it goes up is that at contact point, your racket face is too open. It could be that you outright have the wrong grip. If you don't have the continental grip and you're trying to hit a slice, a backhand slice with a forehand grip, it is really hard to actually square up the racket face and you will be open at contact the ball goes up it floats and it has a whole lot of backspin that really juicily makes the ball sit up a little higher and your opponent can just slam it or you may have just fallen victim to the optical illusion that is the backhand slice what are you talking about micah optical illusion i'm talking about the fact that when we see a backhand slice in the preparation you see the racket face open and then at the end of the swing, again, you see the racket face open. And it kind of would make sense if we say, okay, the beginning of the swing, great, open racket, end of the swing, open racket, well, makes total sense that the middle, the contact basically of the swing also has an open racket face. And then of course, if you're trying to replicate that swinging and keeping the racket face open, or even trying to help the underspin by really cutting down and keeping that racket face open, whoo, that is when we're getting the floaters. So what really happens at contact point of the slice? Let's look at it in slow motion because the naked eye can't see what's happening. Starting with Ash Barty here with a regular speed slice, and then we'll break it down into slow motion. So you do see here very clearly the racket face is completely open with this angle here. And now if we're really, really, really slowing that down, you see how the racket starts to close up a little bit so that at contact point, it is still open, but not nearly as much as almost completely open at her take back here. I mean, that angle is of course pretty extreme. So we'll leave those two at contact point. The racket is almost closed, ever so slightly open. And then of course, at the end of the swing, again, we see that the racket face is open. And you saw in the very beginning, if you run this in real speed, you can see that. And that is what I call the optical illusion. So when I first introduce the slice and or we're making corrections on a player's swing who has issues with the slice, I'm absolutely stressing to keep the racket face almost closed or just ever so slightly open. And I'm also stressing the long extension forward. And a visual cue I said in other videos that really, really helped me was when my dad taught me to say side on and extend the left arm back so that I end up like an airplane. So I always worked on taking the racket back here and then coming forward and through and not finishing here. A lot of people then tell me, but Micah, we do see Federer, Ans Jabor, and you actually, you Micah do that too, ending up here. And yes, that does make sense in a way because if I can't extend further than this here, our shoulder is a ball joint and it will come across my body. That's the only thing I can do. But what you don't see a whole lot because it does happen so fast is that the player is actually side on for a very long time, meaning that the chest bone, the belly button are pointing towards the side fence or the left net post. So as they're hitting, they have not rotated open here. 
That is way after they hit the ball. As they're striking the ball, they are still side on. Yeah, Micah, that's all good and well, but I really do see top players come across and they're actually opening up more than you're telling us right now. And yeah, okay, that's when I have to admit there is such a thing. Quite honestly, I call that a specialty shot. And it's basically when the player definitely purposefully comes across to give the ball side spin. But for me to teach that to the players that I mostly teach, and I believe that mostly watch my videos, anywhere from total beginner to 354045, I think there are a lot of basics in the quote unquote regular slice that I want them to perfect first before I'm introducing that shot. For the simple reason that if you're doing it too much, a lot of players cannot control that. And guess what? Racket faces open, the ball floats, and we're hacking at the ball and all bad things happen. So in this video, I will show you how to hit that banana slice. Or should I call it bend it like Sinner and Dimitrov? Yannick Sinner and Grigor Dimitrov. And you notice that both players are coming across with their rackets across their body pretty significantly. And you'll then notice that the balls are basically bending back towards the middle. Right on that one, it's really easy to see. And that happens because both of them open up ever so slightly more. Grigor Dimitrov here is still very much side on, but a little less than when he would hit a regular more through the court slice. So when does it make sense to hit that banana slice? As with all slices, when you use that specialty slice, you are messing with your opponent's rhythm. So now when you're in a regular cross court rally, back into back in slice, if it's two right handers, and of course you can do the same against a left hander or vice versa if you're a left hander, you're introducing side spin. So the ball now curves into the body of your opponent and they now have to move sideways to make room for that. And not a lot of players are used to that. Now the perfect option to use that banana slice is for instance, if you're coming in, you're attacking your opponent's forehand or even better back in if it's a lefty and the ball then curves even further away from them. And it's super fun to see when somebody with a really extreme grip tries to get under that bendy slice. If you do want to start working on this specialty shot, start with a choked up grip. Absolutely make sure you have your continental grip and just experiment on a very short distance first. So I'm right here at the service line and I'm just self tossing these balls. With a choked up racket, you have a lot more control over your racket head. And to see the ball curve, you're probably gonna have to use a lot less of that side swipe and or slight opening up than you think. So keep working in small increments from closer to further back. And just check that you're not doing this. I do wanna put that out there though. I, as I said already, I tend to stay away from working on that because I feel there's so many fundamental things that a lot of players should master first before they get into that specialty. And if you wanna make sure that you have your fundamentals straight, check out this video. That is where I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about the regular backhand slice.